Hey everybody, Connie Knox here with Genealogy TV. I am here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family research. Today, I want to talk about the uh, new product that Ancestry has come out with called ThruLines. It's under the DNA tab on, on the website online at Ancestry.com. So I wanted to talk about that today and talk about um, the good and the bad and the ugly. I don't know there's any ugly about it. It's just a couple things that I want uh, everyone to be aware of. Um, I know that as I started exploring with it, I went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, wait, wait a minute. Let's, let's dig into that a little bit deeper. And that is kind of the theme here today is dig deeper. Okay, so let's jump over to uh, the website and let me walk you through some of what I'm learning. So over here under the DNA tab, you know, you go to your normal results, right? And normally, uh, we would scroll down, and this is where through lines has jumped in in place of the DNA circles. If you recall, this section before had DNA circles. Now, in another episode, I talk a lot about DNA matches and your cousin matches and using those as really the the real meat and potatoes of doing your DNA research. So moving on down though, uh, there's this section down here called New Ancestry Discoveries, and this is uh, they're still in beta. And if we open that up, this is basically taking your DNA connections, right? And it's telling you people that you may not have discovered in your own tree yet. Well, right here is a gal named Viola Morrison. Viola? I guess her name's Villy, like as in Lily, Viola Morrison. So let's remember her for a moment, okay? And we're gonna come back to that in a minute. But if you scroll down, you can see the various potential ancestors in my family. And I occasionally come in here and look at them and, and sometimes every now and then I will already have somebody in my tree and somehow it's duplicated, uh, probably because these people are actually in other people's trees. And so it's always a word of caution when using somebody else's tree um, to look at all the sources and do the homework again yourself because it only makes a stronger tree. Um, so let's jump over to Viola Morrison. So here's Viola, right? And it says here a little bit more information about her. Viola Morrison was born in 1793 in Pennsylvania. Oh, excuse me, Pitts, Pennsylvania, Virginia. And so on. But it says to learn more about Viola, we can open that up and we get her, her lifeline and all kinds of good information. There's a point here. So if we take Viola, <clears throat> this is now in the DNA circles and it says there's 71 members and 17 matches to me. And here's the, the DNA circle as it used to be. And it is still there for you. And if I click on this guy, it's like, holy cow, look at all these people that uh, are in the DNA circle. So these people do not have a DNA connection with me. This is my group here. So I only have a DNA connection with these guys. But this group right here has a DNA connection with all of these people. So it's potential because if you'll remember, we get 50% of our DNA from our mother, 50% of our DNA from our father, therefore 25% from each grandparent and gets smaller and smaller. So it could be that one of those lines that's dying out in our genetic tree, while we still have a real paper tree, right? It could be that these guys are falling into the paper tree and not into my genetic tree. Like, see, they're not in my genetic tree, but they are probably have their family ties in my paper tree, okay? Let's just hold that thought for a minute, okay? So if we, Look, and we scroll around the different people. All these people have a connection with each other. It just so happens that I, in, I'm in this group. I don't have a, a, an exact DNA connection with these folks. All right, now, holding that thought, we're gonna go back up, okay? If we go back into the through lines and we scroll all the way down, and I, before we go in there, your closest matches are gonna be up top. So my folks, my gra grandparents, my grandparents, great grandparents, and so on until the genetic distance gets farther and farther away. But one of the things I had fun doing was going all the way down to the bottom here 
and I started discovering all of these people that say potential ancestor. And these are the ones I was really interested in. And here it says Viola Morrison, same person that was in the DNA circles, potential ancestor. So if I click through to her, it takes me to the, it's basically the same thing as the DNA circles, except in a much better view. So here's Viola, who is, remember, a potential ancestor. It shows me whose tree it's from, and it shows me how I'm connected. All right, so there's 12 DNA connections in this line. This is me. So if I open this up, I can see, you know, how I connect. There's me, mom, grandfather, and so on, up to this potential ancestor. So what they're doing is they're taking other people's trees and they're putting them in line with you as through lines for potential ancestor. But keep in mind, we are always very cautious about using other people's trees. And this person is coming from this person's tree. But what's also interesting here is that it's showing, now I do know Melissa Smith is in my tree, okay? And it's showing other siblings based on other people's trees. Here's another tree, here's another tree, here's another tree, and we can scroll to the right. This is kind of cool, actually. We can scroll to the right, and we can see all of these other potential or likely, and quite honestly, I don't recall if these people are in my tree. This is kind of an offshoot for me, but <clears throat> it does give you a hint over here as to whose tree this information is coming from. And it says how many DNA uh, matches are in this line. So here there's 12 DNA matches in this line. Here there are three DNA matches in this line, four DNA, eight DNA, and four DNA matches. So there's a lot of cousins in this line, okay? So if, if I wanna open it up in my own direct line, those 12 DNA matches are are these set of matches. So five plus three is eight plus two is 10 plus two is 12. That's the 12 that we saw in the previous screenshot. So here's the 12 DNA matches again. And we can now drill into say this line to see if we wanna learn more about it here. And there's one DNA match and the other three. We can open that up and we can see even more. All right, so we got those 12. What's interesting is I want to go up. I want to see, okay, who else is in there? Well, I could drill through to this person's tree, and now you got to pay attention. You're looking at somebody else's tree over here, and you can then see, all right, well, what kind of evidence do you have that says this person belongs in this tree? You can also come over here and look at their tree as opposed to coming up here and looking at your tree. So if you click through to the tree, now we can see how Viola Morris, Morrison, fits into the tree. And holy cow. So here is probably the owner of that tree. And I'm not sure where Viola's hanging out. So let's type in Viola. And there she is. So we click on that. All right. And there she is. So now I've got more potential ancestors for Viola. I can study how is it that Viola is related to my family. And I can sit there and go through all of her tree and go, okay, yep, she's got it right. I can look at all the evidence, say, okay, I'm with you, I understand. And then I can import some of that data. Let's go look at this, for example. We go look at her profile and we go, oh, all right, I see this and go through, yep, Cable, yep, that's right, mm-hmm, that makes sense. Okay, this is some great finds here, okay? If I like it, I can come up here and I can say save to a person in my tree. What happens if I type Viola? I know Viola is not in my tree. She's not in my tree. So I say add a new person to my tree. And now I get to add all that new information. So let's take a look at another line in the tree. Again, one of the things that I discovered here is this says private, but this person's long since dead, surely, because this is this 
person's a fourth great uncle, third great grandfather. So if this is a third great grandfather, this is a fourth great grandmother. And so I drill into this and I'm like, okay, well, who is this person? Well, this, this private tree contains information about Sarah Gilkerson, born in 1785 in Greenbrier, West Virginia. So, I mean, it's still giving me that information even though it says that person is listed as private. So I can then contact the owner of this tree and say, hey, yo, cousin, help me out here. Tell me about your family history. And so that, that is right there, uh, good information. So moving on to another example, I did the same thing here. And again, William Morris, it gives me information about this person's tree um, and all of the sources that they might have. So again, you can contact that person. Here's an interesting situation. So this is a different part of my tree, but I, it, in, when you get down and you drill downwards, it gives you this up arrow and you can also find ancestors in the upward direction, which is kind of interesting. So this unknown Simmons is something I wrote in my tree. But because of the DNA connections, I might be able to find out who that unknown Simmons person is by digging around in all of these other uh, DNA match trees. And so it's just a matter of, of digging in, looking at their um, resources in those other people's trees. Now, when you're done, you can always go back over here in the upper left corner to the back to through lines I find it interesting that they call it that, but <clears throat> through lines. I keep wanting to call it true lines, but it's not true, that's for sure, because it is definitely using other people's trees to estimate what other people might be in your tree. I know that this one's mine, but this one, this one is not. This one comes from somebody else. Let's go see. It comes from a John Simmons uh, in 1871. It comes from a private tree. So I can then contact that person about that private tree. It's actually rather cool. And of course it says it's beta. I know they are also looking for feedback. See, look, it's even asking, was this useful? Please provide feedback. I highly recommend you do that. So if we go back all the way back to my DNA results, it has replaced the, the DNA circles with these through lines. So um, I give it a one and a half thumbs up, let's say. Um, just a little skeptical because I'm afraid that people are going to assume that what's in the through lines is true and that, you know, it's magic because, you know, whatever's online has got to be right, right? No. Do the homework. Go look at the resources. Go look at and see if you're coming to the same conclusions that the other um, ancestry members are as well. Because if if you're coming to a conclusion and somebody else is coming to that same conclusion based on the evidence that you've collectively found, whether you found some and somebody else found some, and you both come to the same conclusion, that makes only for a stronger tree. And that's what we want, right? We want the whole world tree to be perfect, right? Well, it never will be, but, you know, if, if you import data from another member's tree and it's wrong, then... Now that's two people that say it's wrong and some third newbie comes along and they go, oh, two people think that's right, so it must be, and they import it into their tree, now it's three people. We need to make sure that everybody's looking at the data and thinking for themselves, is this look logical, does this look right, and, and doing some quality research and collaborating. That's kind of what this is about too, right? So that is um, my take on through lines. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you liked it, if it was helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to share. Sharing is caring. Until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.